223 A fusion of the Trinity in the soul. Presence of God, O Most Holy Trinity, deign to renew your visit to my soul. Meditation 1. At the very moment of our baptism, the three persons of the Blessed Trinity take up their abode in our soul. Yet the Church teaches us in the Veni, Sancte Spiritus, come, Holy Spirit, to ask continually for the coming of the Holy Spirit, and consequently, of the Blessed Trinity, for, by reason of their indivisible unity, no one of the three divine persons comes to us without the others. But, if the three divine persons are within us already, how can they come again? A soul needs to have only a single degree of grace in order to have God, who is already present in it as Creator present also as Friend, inviting it to live in intimacy with Himself. However, this friendship, this intimacy, has different degrees. It becomes closer and more profound according as the soul, growing in grace and charity, acquires a greater capacity for entering into a deeper relationship with the Blessed Trinity. Something similar is effected between two persons who are friends and who live in the same house. When their mutual affection increases, their friendship becomes more intense, thus, although they were already present to each other, their reciprocal presence takes on a new aspect, one that is proper to the presence of a very dear friend. Likewise, the Trinity already inhabits the souls of the just, but the presence of the divine persons can always be made stronger in terms of a more intimate affection, that is to say, they can always enter into deeper relations of friendship with the soul. This is realized progressively, as the soul acquires additional degrees of grace by advancing in charity. Since these new effusions of the Trinity, in the souls of the just present aspects, and produce effects which are always new, we can rightly call them new comings, new visits of the divine persons. But, in reality, they are always present in the soul. Their visit does not come from without but from within the soul itself, where they dwell and give themselves, and even, to a certain degree, reveal themselves to the soul according to the words of Jesus He that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him JN 14, 21. Never are we given a better opportunity to understand the great reality contained in the words of the Gospel the Kingdom of God is within ULK 17, 21 and when we are in the presence of this ineffable mystery. 2. The first visitor effusion of the Blessed Trinity in our soul took place on the day of our baptism. The Father sent us His Son, the Father, and the Son sent us the Holy Spirit, and because of the indissoluble unity of the three, without being sent the Father Himself came. Now this visit is renewed every time we acquire an additional degree of grace through the reception of a sacrament, or by advancing in charity. The promise of Jesus, if any one love me, we will come to him, and will make our abode, with him JN 14, 23, is never exhausted, it is always new, always ready to be actualized every time the conditions for it are renewed, that is, every time we love more intensely. This divine gift which is offered so generously to us ought to spur us on to generosity and to constant progress in love, for only thus can we have full fruition of it. The Blessed Trinity will set no limits to the effusion of charity and grace in our soul, 
provided we place no obstacle to their development. Our horizon is broad and boundless, because the model proposed to us by Jesus for our life of union with the blessed Trinity is that very union that exists between the three divine persons themselves. Even in his priestly prayer on the evening of the Last Supper, Jesus asked his Father to give us a like union as thou, Father, in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, I be I thee. 17. 21. It is evident that as creatures we can never be united to the Trinity, as the three divine persons are united to one another. Yet, Jesus did not hesitate to offer us, and to ask for us, a similar union, in order to urge us on to every higher levels, and to make us understand that if we do not fail in our correspondence to grace, the three persons of the Holy Trinity will never cease to diffuse themselves into our souls, nor to unite us to themselves, until we are made perfect in one I be I thee. 17. 23. Only in heaven where we shall contemplate the Trinity unveiled, face to face, will our union with the divine persons be perfect, but here on earth, we must hasten by faith and love toward the wonderful goal which will be our happiness for all eternity. Colloquy O Trinity, Most High God, Merciful, Beneficent, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, One God, my hope is in you. Teach me, direct me, sustain me. O Father, by your infinite power, fix my memory in you, and fill it with holy and divine thoughts. O Son, enlighten my intellect with your eternal wisdom, give me the knowledge of your supreme truth, and of my wretchedness. O Holy Spirit, love of the Father, and the Son, by your incomprehensible goodness, draw my will to yourself and inflame it with the fire of your charity which can never be extinguished. O my Lord and my God, O my beginning, and my end, O sovereignly simple, calm, and lovable essence. O abyss of sweetness and delights, O my amiable light, supreme happiness of my soul, ocean of ineffable joy, perfect plenitude of all good things my God, and my all, what is lacking to me, when I possess you. You are my one, immutable treasure. I do not have to seek or desire anything outside of you. You alone do I seek, and desire. Lord, draw me to you. I knock, O Lord, open to me open, to a little orphan wine plowers you. Plunge me into the abyss of your divinity. Grant that I may be one spirit with you, so that I may possess your delights within me, Saint Albert the Great. O Holy Father, by that love with which you cast on me a reflection of the light of your countenance, give me grace to advance in you by holiness and virtue. O my Lord Jesus Christ, by the love which induced you to redeem me with your blood, clothe me with the purity of your most holy life. O divine Paraclete, you, whose power equals your holiness, by the love which made you bind me to yourself, grant me the grace to love you with my whole heart, to adhere to you with my whole soul, and to use all my strength to love and serve you so that I may live according to your inspiration, Saint Gertrude.